Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be looking at the most recently updated version of Monster Max 2. Now, if you haven't seen the full reveal video over on Whistlin' Diesel's channel, definitely go watch it. It's wild. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And not only from the standpoint of, like, whether or not you're a fan of his channel, I think that the actual engineering and the development put into this truck, honestly, just, like, to me, that warrants watching the video, like, solely just that in itself. So, regardless of whether or not you're a fan of his channel i think you know if you're into trucks at all definitely go and check this thing out and once again i'll link off to that in the description down below now monster max 2 itself now you guys have seen the in development version of this truck on my channel before as a snowrunner mod but this version has almost all of the features that the real one now has now the horn which basically if you guys watched his video he has a horn like a literally a ship horn a battleship horn that it really isn't mounted anywhere it's just connected to the dual air tanks right now and it's extremely loud, and the creator of this truck will be adding that ship horn to this mod once he actually has a place to mount it in real life. So basically, once Whistling Diesel actually mounts that horn somewhere, uh, Frog will update this particular mod. Now, the tires are modeled to be the same ones that they are in real life. The wheels are modeled after the real ones. The fuel tanks, or I should say the hater tier tanks, are modeled after the real ones. And he tried really, really hard to get all of the details as close as possible to the real one as he could but without any further ado or without any more rambling on let's go ahead and fire this thing up and we're gonna take it through some tests out here on remo's test course to see what it can do and as you can see there's that secondary rear mounted lbz duramax in the bed to go with the one that is under the hood so let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it can do it sounds so good i'm always such a big like I've always been such a big fan of this truck, mainly because I think it speaks to that, like, that little kid in me that loves monster trucks and always has, but this version of it really did take it to another level. So let's go ahead and get that HUD back on, and we'll go ahead and get to driving, because we do need some of those advanced functions, and let's see what this thing is like when you take it through the mud. Now, it's not a mud truck. Keep that in mind. It's not a mud truck, and it's not really... I feel like there are some people out there that would argue that it's like, well, it's not really a monster truck either, but at the end of the day, it's kind of its own category. It really has carved out its own category in the truck world for itself, and it really is just huge. I mean, literally, those shocks in real life are bigger than my leg. I mean, that's... Now, granted, I haven't stood next to this thing, but I feel like as far as, you know, watching this in videos and actually see people stand next to it, those things are bigger than, like, your average arm or your average leg. I mean, look at this freaking sway bar. Well, I say sway bar. I say sway bar lightly. It's, it's kind of like a... It's a sway beam, more like. But let's see what this thing can do in the mud. And... Well, let's... Here, you know what? Let's spool it up a little bit first. And go! Now, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, obviously. It's not designed to be. And honestly, one of Frog's biggest focuses when he was designing this truck is he wanted to make it pretty true to the real thing. And the real thing isn't going to be setting any land speed records. It's not going to be, you know, blasting down a road at 200 miles an hour. That's not what this truck was designed for. him. And really, at the end of the day, I don't think you're ever going to be going much more than, like, 30-something in, in something like this. You know, 30 maybe, like, I feel like anything over 35, like 40 would be sketch. Now, I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, what do you mean? 35, 40 miles an hour? That's slow as crap. Not when your tires are larger than most pickup trucks. Not at all. And I've got to say, you know, when you're not in high, or even when you are in high, it doesn't really sink in the mud all that much, though. I definitely think that these tires have a weird dynamic to them to where in SnowRunner, a lot of the time, when you have a tire that's this wide, sometimes it'll do sometimes it'll do this weird thing where it'll sink in the mud, and the physics system really seems to prefer uh, having your tires as skinny as possible in the mud, but this doesn't seem to be having that issue at all. The only issue I'm having in here is bumping into the edges of the mud lane because the truck is so incredibly dang wide. I mean, really, at the end of the day... That's about the only issue I'm having. If you can even call it an issue, because at the end of the day, it's not really an issue. It's just a dynamic of driving this truck that you're going to have to get used to. Now, let's head back to the center area, and instead of recovering to the garage, I want to see if I can just fly down this center mud lane. I want to see if I can stay in high all the way down. I'm flat out. Let's see if she does it. Come on. It starts to bog down a little bit, but then it picks itself back up again. So I'm, I'm really like, literally, I have not lifted. Look, I'm, oh no! The second I held my controller up, it caught the edge, and it was like, nope, you are gonna drive up the edge now, and that's gonna be that. 
So let's make our way back down to the garage now. And we're going to head a little bit further to the right on this map because there are some really interesting challenges here, including train poles. Now, if you've never done train poles before, it really is one of the most hilarious and interesting ways to test something's towing capacity. So let's see what we can do with this thing right here. This is going to be wild. Now, I'm not going to do the contest. I just kind of want to do the... I just kind of want to do the standard, like, pull just as it is. Let's see what this thing is all about. Now, this is what... It's called, like, the medium or moderate tow test. And go! Oh, my God. All right. Or torque test, rather. It's putting it down. That's honestly pretty incredible. The fact that it just, like... It didn't even have to wait for it to build boost or anything at all. It just put it right down and went... The amount of low-end torque is, I mean, obviously it's very dramatic, but that's kind of what you expect out of something like this. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. It's in third gear in automatic. It's gonna, it's gonna go all the way to the top of the hill, and nothing's gonna stop it. That's the other thing, is like, nothing's gonna stop it from going all the way to the top of the hill. That is absolutely tremendous. Wow. Okay, I'm very pleased with that. Let me disconnect that. It's probably going to keep... Oh, what? The physics turned themselves off. Okay. Well, I figured it would keep on going, and I wanted to see if it would, like, smash into the other end. But, like, let me see if I can push it back down. Apparently, this works. It's, like, half skateboarding the train. I did not realize that would work, but I'm also actually really pleased that it did. All right, let me get around you. and I'm going to head back down to the bottom of the hill. And see, you know, when you get into it, even downhill, it's not mind-blowingly fast. It's fast for what it is, but it's not setting any, you know, SnowRunner speed records or any speed records in any form, really, at the end of the day. But I think that's part of the beauty of it, because it was designed in some way around what the real one would be like. So let's see what this one is all about. Easy. Heavy torque test discovered. Let's see what you can do here. I feel like at the end of the day, this is going to be a little more sketchy, but I'm all about sketchy. And let's, let's actually, let's pull it up a little bit beforehand. Drop it. Pull the front axle off the ground. Come on. But really, it's still not complaining. There's second gear. I'm still flat out, by the way. I have not lifted, and I don't think I'm going to be lifting at all. Dude, this is, this is just like rolling right out. It doesn't even care anymore. That's amazing. I mean, it made such short work of that. I didn't even, I didn't expect it to make that short work of it. I expected it to struggle at least a little bit on the heavy haul test or like the heavy tow test. But that is like, that's amazing. That's going to bump into me, isn't it? Stop. I want to see what this looks like with the HUD off. I feel like that would be, oh, that would be an even better view. All right, you're going to, oh, oh no. The rolling down the hill is what's going to get me, isn't it? Come on. Feather the throttle and try to transfer that momentum back into the ground. There it is. There it is. Not bad. She's rolling now. Wow. So think about how much torque it would have taken for it to recapture that momentum going, like, with the train rolling backwards down the hill and this guy going uphill. That is intense. Oh, God. We just got, like, shoved in between the freaking... You're going to pull me backwards, aren't you? Oh, stop it. All right. I'm... Oh, no. I, fi I, I, I forgot that if I turned the HUD off, I can't just disconnect from the winch. That's kind of a weird, like... It's kind of a weird thing, and I'm not sure why the game does that. It's like, yeah, you're not going to disconnect from that winch. And I'm like, you sure about that? And the game's like, oh, I'm sure about that. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing repaired and refueled, and we'll get it down to the end of the hill right here, and we'll go on to the final obstacle course. Now, if you guys haven't checked out this map, I highly recommend doing so. It's called Remo's Test Course, and a lot of the obstacles on this map are a really good way to gauge kind of where your truck sits, not only in terms of performance, but in terms of mud capability and, you know, crawling capability, and whoa, we got some more testing out here. Oh, boy. Oh boy, this guy's just kind of sitting there. Yeah, that guy's just kind of sitting there, which is going to be kind of weird because, hmm, I feel like I'd be able to drag this thing right up the hill, like, no questions asked. Literally, I feel like you could probably just hitch right up to it and go. 
in high. Yeah, dude, the trailer legs are still down. The trailer legs are literally still down, and it doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. It acts like it's not even back there. And disconnect from that. I'm gonna go ahead and steer out of the way of that. Why did it say I discovered another disassembled 770G? That doesn't make any sense, because I just discovered both of those a second ago. Yeah, okay, that's kind of weird. Oh, the on-pavement performance of these tires is kind of strange, but they're so wide that it makes sense as to why the physics system is probably a little bit unhappy about them, but I'm not really worried about that at all. Now, I will say that this suspension does have a couple of different options that you can run. There is a no-damage suspension option if you just want to run it, you know, like as is and never have to worry about it never have to repair it now on maps that have dev tools you don't really need to think about that that much i mean you could literally just like hit the dev tools button and boom you've got an instantly repaired truck but i mean at the end of the day it is it can get a little bit frustrating though whenever you're driving through like a random area and you hit a you know a, a small shrub and the game is like uh you've got damage for that whoa there's a fast gearbox in here I didn't realize that was in there. We're going to have to play around with that again sometime soon because I want to see what that is actually all about. I didn't even realize that there was a fast gearbox in there. All right, so this course, I do want to try and time because I'm very curious as to what it can do. So let's see. Let's go ahead and get you lined up. We'll back it up. Go ahead and flip that. And go. Come on. Now, I'm sure that I could get a much faster time with the speedy gearbox, but kind of want to see how it does in base spec. I know I say base spec lightly because there's nothing base spec about Monster Max 2 in any way, shape, or form. But I'm going to make, I think, a run around the side right here. The weird part about that one is the fact that it barely fits on one of those ramps. So you kind of have to be really careful, like, how you attack it. Otherwise, it will just catch on the side and turn you over, flip you around, something like that. But let me keep it in high for the back half of this course. The back half of this course is a little weird, but let's see what you can do. Let's see if it'll stay in high in the mud. This mud is pretty thick. That's pretty good. Actually, Frog did a really good job of figuring out how to keep these big tires from sinking. Because again, with the SnowRunner physics system, really wide tires like to sink in mud for whatever reason. The game is like not a fan of super wide tires, but he definitely figured out how to code these in a way that they wouldn't do that. All right, let's make our way down around these rocks. Oh, it's like it's turning the truck in a weird direction. It's going to set a good time, I'm sure, but... You know, in comparison to something like a super overpowered crawler, it's a little out of its element here, but this truck really can do just about everything, and I think that that's part of the genuine beauty of it, but boom, that is across the line. Minute 17 seconds, which really is kind of, again, in a class of its own. It's not necessarily going to be as fast as some of the crazy, you know, overpowered crawler vehicles, but in comparison to other monster trucks... I mean, again, there's not much you can compare this thing to. Now, if you guys enjoyed this look at the updated Monster Max 2 and SnowRunner, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.